right, thank you. Thank you very much. I think we have to leave it there and move on to our next speaker um, is Sergei Sokolovsky from UCAR. Talk about the geolocation of the ionospheric scintillation in the equatorial layer. Okay, uh, good evening. So, geolocation of the anaesthetic scintillation, of course, in fact, of irregularities. So, we will consider. Um, Could you be a little closer to the microphone? Yeah. Okay. You know what? I will do without pointer because <laughs> I can't do both. Um, we will consider principles and numerical modeling and then back propagation of real signals. Processing of cosmic two data. Um, validation is not considered in this study. It was done in a separate study. Um, Chen Wu published um, paper this year. Validation by Gold. Also, it was mentioned earlier that there are two algorithms developed by Boston College and at UCAR. So this presentation will only, only consider the UCAR uh, back propagation algorithm. Okay, so we see scintillation on orbit, but where irregularities are located. So long ago, they were just assigned to tangent point, not anymore. So scintillation can be caused by different mechanisms and we consider equatorial ionosphere. So it's caused by field align irregularities inside plasma bubbles and different methods were considered for localization. Um, we use back propagation, which is solving wave equation in a vacuum by using phase and amplitude at receiver as boundary condition. So it's quite simple in principle, but when it comes to practical implementation, there are nuances. So we need the following uh, approximations. Irregularities must be approximated by phase screen. They must be significantly anisotropic and their orientation must be known. And uh, the, the last two requirements, actually, why do we need them? Because the signal is observed on one dimensional trajectory. So that means that by propagation can be only two dimensional. We cannot solve three dimensional problem. It's underdetermined. That means that the regularities projected on the face screen must be one dimensional. And this basically allows uh, projecting signal from any receiver trajectory on the back propagation plane defined perpendicular to irregularities on the face screen. So right panel shows very simple modeling. Plane wave, top panel propagating. Um, well, I, mm -hmm. Okay, plane wave propagating from left to right, face screen in the center, then phase, uh, amplitude fluctuation. Grayscale shows amplitude fluctuations. They develop after the screen, propagation through the screen, increase. Then when we apply back propagation from right to left, they reduce to the screen and then increase again. This is imaginary uh, electromagnetic field. Okay, so if we calculate the amplitude variance as function of distance, the position of that phase screen, which models irregularities, uh, is determined by minimum of that amplitude variance. This is, these are well-known things. Uh, these, hmm. this can angle alpha is most important parameter in, in this technique. And the norm the amplitude variance actually is the main metric. Okay. So if we don't know that angle, uh, scan angle alpha, Actually, we may get very big errors of localization by back propagation. So we need to know it. And here we estimate um, uh, approximately, we, we estimate the error of geolocation related to uncertainty of that angle. We actually take very, I would say, uh, the smallest estimate, uh, which is based on accuracy of IGRF model, which is about 1%. And even with this very small estimate, we see that at small distances to irregularities, 
um, small angle actually, the accuracy is very good, but if you, if we go to large angles and large distances, it can be very large actually, hundreds of kilometers. Okay. So um, what if the first condition actually, approximation by single phase screen is not valid? Um, here are two examples. The left one was basically investigated in the study more by Ludwig Barbosa and, uh, and co-authors and was confirmed in this study. If we have two regions with regularities, for example, two bubbles with the same orientation of regularities, then if we apply back propagation, we cannot resolve them if the strength of irregularities is the same. But if the strength is larger on one of the screens, regardless of whether it's closer or farther away from receiver, uh, it's characterized by sigma phi, uh, then only that region or phase screen can be resolved and another one cannot. So we just, just only confirmed this because our goal was to investigate another case when the irregularities are misaligned actually. In this case, two-dimensional forward propagation doesn't work. We need three-dimensional. Back propagation, of course, is always two-dimensional. And for example, grayscale plots show, plots show um, amplitude distribution on observational plane. And we can see that if we have only first or only second phase screen, they are one-dimensional, but after propagation for both the screens, the this distribution becomes two-dimensional. So the result is, again, two regions cannot be resolved, but only the region with smaller scan angle alpha can be geolocated. Another one cannot. So in this case, basically, the scan angle plays, plays the same role as magnitude of irregularities for regions with aligned irregularities. OK, now using real observational data. So what do we do? We, basically, it consists of three steps. The first step, we project uh, transmitter and receiver project trajectories on the back propagation plane, which is defined to be perpendicular to regularities projected on the phase screen at the anticipated location. Okay, and um, that is uh, that um, what say, orientation of regularities uh, is used for, for this orientation, we use magnetic field model, IGRF-14. Um, okay, so next step. Um, solving wave equation implies that we have stationary transmitter. In fact, it is not because transmitter is moving. So what do we do? We fix the transmitter position to the midpoint of that 10 second interval, which we use for back propagation. And then correct position, positions and uh, phases also of the receiver here, okay? Um, so that the straight line connecting transmitter and receiver has the same height on the face screen. And we have freedom actually how to define that corrected trajectory. It can be close to original or it can be perpendicular to propagation direction. And finally, step three is correction of the phase front curvature because projection of the signal on back propagation plane changes the wave front curvature because the transmitter is at final dist finite distance. And we apply this phase correction term. And now we, we can apply back propagation. Here is one example. So left panel shows the signal amplitude phase and sigma phi MS4. And middle panels show again uh, back-propagated amplitude by grayscale and that function amplitude variance, which shows the location of regularities. But the, 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 the problem is that if we define back-propagation plane using magnetic field orientation at some distance, generally we will not find the minimum of the amplitude variance at that distance. It will be somewhere at another distance. So what, what do we do? We apply back propagation in two nested loops. Inner loop, actually, <clears throat> performs back propagation for a given orientation of uh, back propagation plane. And the outer loop cycles through the distances which were used to define orientation of the, oops, 
to define that, that orientation of the propagation plane. And we calculate the difference between those two distances. And, and when it equals zero, that is the location of irregularities. There are, here are uh, several more examples. First and second example, actually examples show, show the cases where we have clearly defined uh, position of irregularities by back propagation. But third example shows a different story. We have actually three solutions of this problem. So we call it multivariate geolocations. So why do, does this happen actually? Why are we getting them? The answer is it's related to specific structure of that, um, I would say, scan angle alpha is function of the distance along the line of sight. Um, we define so-called degenerate functions for sine of angle alpha, which are defined as such that, oh my God, such that uh, this condition, uh, distance to minimum amplitude variance and to that point where magnetic field was used is satisfied at all distances. And here is the family of such functions. So if the real function alpha uh, crosses this degenerate function multiple times, we will get multiple geolocations. And there is no way to distinguish where the true irregularities are located. So this is additional limitation of the, this technique. Okay, this is the result of processing of two years of cosmic data. Um, we can see that they show um, seasonal variability and interannual variability correlated with solar cycle and more detailed pl detail plots can be can be seen in the poster upstairs by Irina Zakharenkova. Um, okay. We also did test based on 10 days comparing L1 and L2 geolocations. Um, they are generally in good agreement and there is kind of internal validation of this technique which gives more confidence. On the other side, there are some outliers where the locations are different and they need further investigation. Uh, and that's the summary. Thank you very much. Are there any quick questions? Be quick. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Let's thank our speaker again. And um, and welcome our next speaker, Jeff Stewart from Orion Space Solutions.